Hey guys, welcome back. So in this video, I'm going to be working through an example demonstrating how to solve an exact equation. So let's say that we are presented with this differential equation right here. Now, the first thing that I would do is I would check whether it is separable or not. If it is separable, whether it is linear or nonlinear, I will just go ahead and solve it using straight up integration. However, if it's not separable, but it is of the form y prime plus a of x, y is equal to b of x, then I know that I can solve this with an integrating factor. But we can see that this differential equation is neither separable or of this form. So the next thing that we wanna check is whether it fits the homogeneous form. Uh, and that just says whether or not we can express y prime as a function of y over x. And we can see that we cannot do that in this case as well. So since all three of these options are not available, what we do now is we say, okay, let's check to see if it is an exact equation. And recall that an exact equation refers to a different equation of this form, the partial derivative of x of a function psi, which is a function of x and y, equals zero. And we can write this expression out explicitly by applying this differentiation operator. So we would have the partial derivative with respect to x, I will write like that, and since it is also a function of y, and y is a function of x, we also have to add in this component, uh, psi sub y times dy dx, the chain rule, and that is all equal to zero. So whenever we want to determine whether or not our differential equation is an exact equation or not, we test if it fits this form right here. So I'm gonna rewrite this form as a function of x and y that we will call m, plus a function of x and y that we call n, dy dx is equal to zero. So all I'm doing here is I'm referring to psi sub x or psi differentiated with respect to x as m, and I'm referring to psi sub y as n. So if we look at the different equation presented to us, this would be psi sub x, and this would be psi sub y. Or in other words, we call these m and n. So anyway, whenever we test to see whether or not this is an exact equation, what we do is we assume that m is equal to psi sub x. So we assume that 2x plus y squared is equal psi sub x, and we assume that n is equal to psi sub y. So 2xy is equal to psi sub y. And if this is the case, if m and n really do represent the partial derivatives of an unknown function psi, then from calculus, we know that the mixed partials, psi sub xy, has to be equal to psi sub y x. The mixed partials are equal for a continuous and differentiable function. So this is the criteria that we check in order to tell whether it is exact. And since our function m is psi sub x, then if we differentiate m with respect to y, then what we get is psi sub x y, and this has to be equal to the partial derivative of n with respect to x where n is psi sub y, so when I differentiate it with respect to x, I get psi sub y x. So if this equation holds, if m differentiated with respect to y is equal to n differentiated with respect to x, then we refer to this equation as exact because our assumption that m and n were the partial derivatives of an unknown function psi is verified. And therefore we know that our differential equation is of this form right here, and therefore we can solve it. So the first thing that we're gonna do in this example is verify that this is in fact an exact differential equation. So let's take m, which is going to be 2x plus y squared, and let's differentiate it with respect to y. And this comes out to be 2y, because this function 2x goes away since uh, we treat it as a constant, since we're differentiating with respect to y. So now let's take our function n, which is 2xy, and let's differentiate it with respect to x. And when we do this, what we get is 2y. So what we've just computed here is this guy is dm dy, or psi sub xy, and this guy is dn dx, or psi sub yx. So we have 2y is equal to 2y, and therefore our equation is an exact equation, and now we can proceed with solving it. So now that we went... <coughs> So now that we verified that this is in fact an exact equation, then what we know from checking that is that this function is psi sub x and this function is psi sub y. So the next thing that we do is we pick a side. We pick psi sub x or psi sub y to integrate. So let's go ahead and start with psi sub x. So we take psi sub x 
and we integrate it with respect to x. So this is just equal to the integral of 2x plus y squared dx, and when we compute this integral, what we get is x squared plus x times y squared, and then we also get this function of y. And this function of y just represents a function of integration. It's kind of like a constant of integration, but since we differentiated with respect to x to get 2x plus y squared, we know that if we integrate back, we're going to have a function of y here. So the next thing that I'm gonna do is I wanna take our result from right here, and now I wanna differentiate it with respect to y. Because technically what I have right here underlined in purple represents psi, because we took psi sub x and integrated it with respect to x, and so what we get when we do that is just psi, but it's in terms of an unknown function y, so that's what we're set out to find right now. So when I differentiate this function with respect to y, I get psi sub y is equal to the partial derivative of x squared plus xy squared plus our unknown function g of y. So this comes out to be uh, the x squared goes away, and what we're left with is 2xy, and then plus the derivative of g of y with respect to y is g prime of y. And since this is equal to psi sub y, so let's do a quick backtrack. Uh, in step one, we came up with an expression for psi, and then we differentiated with respect to y, so we get psi sub y. But we already have an expression for psi sub y, which is up here from our differential equation. So we can actually set this expression equal to our function n of xy, or also known as psi sub y, and then we can use that equation to solve for our unknown function g of y. So in the third step, what I wanna do is I wanna take our result from step two, and I wanna set it equal to our function n, which is another expression for psi sub y. So I get 2xy plus g prime of y is equal to n of xy, which is just 2xy. So whenever I solve for g prime, what I get is g prime of y is equal to zero. And I'm gonna rewrite that as dg of y dy is equal to zero. So what I have here is a differential equation. If I move the dy over, what I get is a separable differential equation dg of y is equal to zero dy. So I can just straight up integrate both sides. So what I get is I get g of y is equal to zero plus a constant. So what we've done is we've found an expression for our, our unknown function g of y. And in this case, it just comes out to be a constant. But that's not always the case. Sometimes um, the integral that you get here will actually produce a function for g. So always make sure to be careful whenever finding your unknown function g of y. But anyway, what we do is we come back to this equation up here, our expression of our unknown function psi that we're looking for in terms of g of y, and then we just plug in for g of y. So for the final step, what I get is x squared plus xy squared plus g of y, which comes out to just a constant, plus c is equal to psi. And don't forget, we define psi implicitly by setting this all equal to a constant. And if you're a little confused on why we do that, go ahead and watch my previous video. So anyway, I can combine both of these constants into one, and what I get is x squared plus xy squared is equal to a constant. And this function right here, this implicitly defined function, is our unknown function psi that we were looking for. So this would be our answer. Now just for completeness, let's say that we wanted to start with this side, or we wanted to start with psi sub y, instead of psi sub x. So we can do the same four steps, except for the only difference is we're starting with psi sub y. So we've already verified that this is an exact equation. So we know that 2x plus y squared represents the partial derivative of our unknown function y with respect to x, and 2xy represents the partial derivative of our unknown function with respect to y. So let's go ahead and take 2xy, our psi sub y, or our n of xy, and let's go ahead and integrate it with respect to y. So in this step, all we're doing is we're integrating psi sub y with respect to y, which gives us psi. But when we compute this integral right here, uh, what we get is x times y squared. And then we have a function of x. And notice that this is not a function of y. It is a function of integration that is only a function of x because 2xy represents the partial derivative of psi with respect to y, which means that when we differentiated it with respect to y, we got rid of all 
uh, functions of x. So when we integrate and when we undo that process, we have to take into account that there is possibly a function of x that we may have to add on. So anyway, now what I want to do is I want to take a result, which was psi is equal to x y squared plus g of x, and I want to differentiate it with respect to x. So the partial derivative with respect to x of psi is equal to the partial derivative with respect to x of x y squared plus g of x. And this comes out to be y squared plus g prime of x. And since this is equal to psi sub x, what we do is we set it equal to our function m, or um, 2x plus y squared. So in the third step, what we do is we just solve this equation for our unknown function g of x. So I can rewrite this as g prime of x is equal to 2x plus y squared minus y squared, or in other words, g prime of x is equal to 2x because the y squareds cancel out. So I'm gonna rewrite this as dg of x dx is equal to 2x. So what I have here is a separable differential equation. So I can move this dx over and integrate both sides. And what I'm left with is our unknown function g of x is equal to x squared. So I take this result and I plug it back up into this expression for psi. And in the final step, what I get is psi is equal to xy squared plus x squared. And we set this all equal to a constant. So this would be our answer, and we can verify that this is exactly what we got when we started from the other side, when we started with psi sub x. So we can see that it doesn't really matter what side you start with, but it is strategic to pick the side that is easier to integrate. So whichever function, m or n, is easier to integrate, typically that's the side that we start with. So anyway, hopefully that cleared up a little bit on uh, my previous video, which mainly focused with math and could have been a little bit confusing, but anyway, hopefully this cleared, this cleared anything up. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. Feel free to send in any requests. And other than that, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.